In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called maximum subarray. So given an integer array nums, find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number. So in this case, contiguous subarray is when a, we have a subarray that each element is right next, right next to each other, right? So basically, we want to find a sum that, that is the largest sum and it, um, in a contiguous subarray. Now basically at the end we're just returning its sum. So here you can see we have a array of integers and where the maximum sum is 6. And basically the sum is 4 plus negative 1 and plus 2 plus 1. This will give us, this will generate the largest sum, right? So in this case we're just returning the largest sum. And um, here you can see we have a one element in the array, so we just the largest sum here is one. And so on, right? So the, um, the goal for this problem is that we want to try to do this problem using a linear time complexity. Um, so this is uh, one way we can do this is we can use a brute force approach and basically try each and every single combinations of the array, right? So in this case, in the array, we have integers and we're just going to try each and every single combinations that we can find. And for each combination, we're going to um, compare its sum with the maximum sum that we have so far. And this will give us a n squared time complexity, right? So this is not the most optimal solution. So um, if we were to do this in a linear time complexity, what we can do is we can use dynamic programming. So for dynamic programming, um, I do have a playlist on my channel where I do a lot of dynamic programming problems. So if you want to do more practice on dynamic programming problems, I do have those playlists on my channel called Plico Dynamic Programming. So be sure to check them out. So to solve this problem, we know that this, the contiguous subarray, um, all the elements in the contiguous subarray must be right next to each other, right? Must be adjacent to each other. So what we need to do is we need to for each position, for each element in the, in the array, they have two choices. One is either we can restart a new contiguous array, or what we can do is we can add it onto the um, current maximum contiguous array, right, to form this maximum sum. So what we can do is for this position, for example, while there's no previous uh, maximum subarray, so there is no previous contiguous subarray so far, so we're just gonna form, uh, we're gonna restart, we're gonna start here as a brand new maximum subarray. So in this case, at this current position, the maximum sum is gonna be negative two, right? So in this case, um, the next, when we move on to the next element, we have two decisions. Either we can restart a new contiguous, contiguous subarray, or we can combine the previous element Added, um, added onto it and to get the new sum. So in this case, we have negative two plus one will give us a negative one. So we can have a, um, the, the maximum contiguous sum that we have so far is negative one, or what we can do is we can start, st uh, start a brand new contiguous subarray by saying that this is gonna be the sum, right? We're going to have one element, in this case, it's gonna be one. So in this case, one is bigger than negative two, right? So we're basically just going to get a max of the previous maximum, uh, for the previous maximum sum, right, plus the current num, or just the current num. So in this case, the current num is bigger, so we're gonna have one. And then now we have uh, negative three, right? So in this case, neg negative three plus one, or just negative three. So in this case, negative three plus one is better, so we have negative two. Now we have four. Is four bigger than negative two? In this case, it is then we can just have four, right? So four or four plus negative two, in this case, four, right? So and then we have negative one. In this case, negative one or, ne or four plus negative one. In this case, uh, in this case, we have negative, sorry, yeah, in this case, we have four plus negative one, right? So in this case, it's negative three. Um, sorry, three, yeah. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we can decide either two or two plus three. In this case, two plus three, right? Two plus three is bigger, right? So. And then we can decide either one or one plus five. In this case, one plus five is bigger. Then we have to decide either negative five plus six or just negative five. In this case, negative five plus six is, is bigger, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, one, right? So, and then we can decide either uh, one plus four or just four. In this case, four is bigger. 
but we will also have a variable that keeps track of the maximum that we have so far. In this case, the maximum out of all um, max sum at that each at each and every single position is going to be six. So that's why you can see the output is six. So to sum up, basically the idea is this: we're basically we're given like an array of elements, and we have two variable. One variable basically keeps track of the current maximum sum at each and every single position, right? So in this case, we keep track of the maximum sum. Um, at each and every single position. Either we take the current element as the maximum sum, right? We start a brand new contiguous array, um, or we take we add it up, we take the current element added on to the previous maximum sum to form the maximum sum at the current position. So, and then we also have another variable basic, basically keep track of the the um, the maximum sum that we have seen so far. So we can do this in array form, or we can do a variable form. Basically, we're going to have a, a, a two variables that keep track of the previous uh, maximum sum and the sum that we have so far, right? So let's try to do this in code. So what we have to do first is we're going to declare the variable, and we know that length of the array is going to be bigger than one. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a maximum sum so far, right? That we basically attract that the maximum sum that we have so far, which is basically equal to the first element of the array. Right, because like I said earlier, the, the array the size is bigger than or equal to one. So we know that um, we can just have the maximum sum that we have so far by default is the first element, right? And then the maximum sum that we have, uh, the current maximum sum at this current position, so current max sum, right, is equal to is also equal to nums at zero. Okay, so that's our basically our starting point, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start at index one, while i is less than nums dot length, i plus plus. Okay, we're just going to iterate the entire array, starting from index one. And basically, what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to compare, right? So we're just going to compare the. Um, so first, we're going to get the current maximum sum, right? Uh, the current maximum sum at this current position is equal to uh, the max. So, so the maximum, either the current element, right? So none set i, right? Or the current maximum sum plus the current element. So it's going to be cur current max sum plus nums at i, right? So this will give us the um, the the sum, right? In this case, this will give us the sum and uh, the current maximum sum at the current position. So once we have the current maximum sum, what we're going to do is we're going to have a max sum so far, right? The maximum, the maximum sum so far is either the current maximum sum that we have, um, the max, so current max sum that we have um, up to the current position, or the maximum sum that we have so far. And at the end, all we're trying to return, right, just like I demonstrate, the maximum sum so far that we have is six. So um, at the end, we're just going to return max sum so far. Okay. So let's try to run the code. Okay, let's try it with a few more examples. Okay, let's try to submit. And here you can see we have our success. So basically, this is how we solve this um, LeetCode um, maximum subarray problem. And again, I do have a playlist on my channel where I talk about dynam dynamic programming problems on LeetCode. Very, very popular questions on LeetCode. So be sure to check them out. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching.